It's early February, which means it's time to start thinking about making your spring pre-emergent application, especially if you live in Texas or any of these other southern states where it gets warmer faster than the rest of the country. But remember, the actual rule for soil temperatures on when to make that pre-emergent application is a 55 degree soil temp. And probably the easiest way to check that is just with a meat thermometer if you have one lying around the kitchen. If you don't, there's actually a website that you can go to online which gives you the soil temps in your area as well. And I will leave a link to that below the video if you want to check that out. If you do have a meat thermometer, the first thing you want to do is just make sure that it's set to Fahrenheit and not Celsius. And once you got that, it's just as simple as staking it into the ground and then letting it get its reading. So let's see. 58.8. What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. So first off, I just wanted to briefly touch on what a pre-emergent was, and it's actually in the name, it's a pre-emergent. So it wants to stop those future weeds before they even appear in your lawn. And they're not gonna do anything to the current weeds in your lawn. You'll need a post-emergent for those or you'll just have to go hand pick them. Uh, and we will have videos on post-emergent herbicides in the future. But if you do a good job with your pre-emergent applications and you time them correctly, then you really won't have much trouble with weeds throughout the season and you won't have to deal nearly as much with those post-emergent herbicides. And the way that pre-emergents actually work isn't by stopping germination of the weed seed, which you'll hear pretty often, but what it does is it hinders the cell division of the root system of the weed seed, and then those roots aren't able to grow properly, they can't uptake the nutrients that the weed needs to survive, and the weed dies. And the product that I'm actually going to be using in my lawn this spring is the same one that I used last fall. It is a Sunnyland product called Prodiamine 65WG which means it has water dispersible granules inside the bottle here. So if you actually looked at the product, it is tiny granules, but when you mix those with water, it turns into a liquid application. And I'm gonna make that with my backpack sprayer. Here's a good shot of the actual product itself. You really notice the bright like mustard color almost. And even when you get the granular products, they have that same color profile there. So I think that just is the, uh, the color of prodiamine, definitely prodiamine products, but here you go. So a couple of things that I wanna point out before we talk about the actual application. We've already talked a little bit about the timing. It needs to be that 55 degree soil temperature, but you also, if you can, you want to apply before you're gonna get some good rainfall, be just because if not, you're gonna to have to run your sprinkler system. Another thing I wanted to point out is that when you look at the label for prodiamine, the max rate it tells you to use is 0.83 ounces per 1,000 square feet of the product for the entire season. And since we're actually going to separate our applications in a spring application and a fall application, I really wanna cut that max rate in half and I'm gonna make that application size on both apps. So for me, it's gonna be around 0.4 ounces of product per thousand square feet in my spring application and then I'm gonna come along in the fall and I'm just gonna make the exact same application size. So whenever you're actually ready to mix your product into your tank sprayer, the first thing that you wanna do is just fill your tank, and this is a four gallon tank, so fill it up halfway with water before you put any product in, and then you're gonna to wanna to measure out your product. And if you remember earlier, I said that the max annual rate for this product was 0.83 ounces per thousand square feet of lawn for the entire year. And we're gonna mix that, or uh, split that rather, into two applications, one in the spring and one in the fall. So I'm gonna aim for about 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet on each of those applications. And I have about 4,000 square feet of lawn. So I measured out using my gram scale here, and it's grams and ounces, just whatever unit you need, whatever it says on the label to use. Um, I measured that out. And then I marked it on this little lid right here. You can see the black mark. And that is at the 0.4 ounce mark. 
So what I'm going to do whenever I actually make my uh, application is just fill this up four times. And I've actually already pre-mixed this, so the, the application is already ready to go in here. But you're going to fill this up four times and put it into your tank. And then after the product's in there, you need to mix it up. I actually have a paint mixing attachment that goes on my drill. In the past, I just used a yardstick. Either one will work as long as you're mixing it up in there. And then once you mix it up, you add the rest of the water to get to that four gallon mark. And then you are going to mix it up again. And then once it's all mixed up, you're just going to put that lid on and then you're good to go and you're ready to make your application. Hey, I just wanted to cut in right here and let y'all know that this product is child and pet safe. Just after you water it, make sure that you let it dry before you let your kids and your pets go outside. And also I wanted to let y'all know that there are granular options for this product as well. I know Lowe's sells one called Stonewall and then there's some other options online and I will leave those other options in the description box below. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do whenever you're spraying a herbicide product is make sure you're wearing the proper PPE, which I'll be the first one to admit that I'm not the best at this, especially when it gets hotter outside. Uh, I'm not so great at wearing long pants or long sleeves for that matter, because I'm always in shorts and a t-shirt, just because in Texas it gets up to like 105. But right now, since it's cooler, it's a lot easier. And I've got on the rubber rain boots, long pants, long sleeves, some rubber gloves, and then naturally I've got some glasses on for the eye protection as well. When I actually go to make the application, what I like to start off with is a trim pass along the edge of the fence line. In the backyard, it's actually easy because it's just along the fence. And then when I actually go to make the rest of the application, all I'm doing is making long straight lines that are just back and forth, back and forth until I complete the entire yard and each time that I'm coming back on a line, I like to overlap the previous line just a little bit to make sure that I'm getting complete coverage in the yard. So what we're gonna do right now is just show y'all a trim pass, and then I'm gonna show y'all a couple of the normal passes, the back and forth passes, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this backyard knocked out. Now that we've already made our trim pass, we're just gonna to come to the edge of the trim pass, and now's where we make our long back and forth lines. Each pass, we're just going to slightly overlap our previous pass. So I'm gonna show y'all a couple of these. Whenever I make my applications, I just make sure that I'm walking at a steady pace for the entire application. You wanna keep it consistent. And I like to keep my nozzle, the nozzle of the wand, just below knee level. So here we go. And now as I come back, I'm just going to slightly overlap that previous pass. And that's all there is to it. You're just going to repeat that process until you're finished with your application. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. Remember, after application, you do want to get that watered in within 14 days. That's why I kind of mentioned earlier to try to time it before you have some rain in the forecast. That way you can save a little bit of money on the uh, sprinkler system, not having to run it. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a like. If you want to follow us throughout the season, please hit that red subscribe button below. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the comments section below. I'll see you all again next week. Lawn Insider, out.